Good day, and welcome back. In our last video, we covered the basics of shooting images with PhotoScan. In this installment, things get a little more advanced as we begin using turntables and masking our images. Using a turntable means that instead of moving the camera around the subject, the camera remains stationary and the subject rotates. In my opinion, this is the most effective way to scan, because it eliminates motion blur even when using a very slow shutter. I bought my turntable on Amazon from a company called Lapworks. It is 16 inches in diameter and can support 200 pounds. However, if your object is light enough, a standard kitchen turntable, or Lazy Susan, is more than adequate. You may even already have one in your kitchen or refrigerator. In fact, if you're scanning something small, I would recommend using a smaller turntable, as it will allow you to place your camera closer to the object. Lighting for turntables. Whether you choose to use natural ambient light outside, or artificial lights inside, it is vitally important that the lighting is extremely flat. From the camera's point of view, there should be no evident light source and no shadows. Otherwise, you can end up with a very strange looking result when PhotoScan attempts to align your images. I'm using CFL softboxes from eBay, but you can also try using a light tent or just good old fashioned shade. Okay, we have our turntable and our lights. Let's shoot something. I've marked off 10 degree increments on my turntable and put up a solid background so that PhotoScan doesn't pick up any points besides the subject. For this example, I don't want to worry about masking. Starting simple, we'll begin with the default rock. Stick it on a stand so we can shoot high, mid, and low angles. I'm also using a cabled shutter trigger to eliminate motion blur. To save time, I'm only shooting half the rock. In a few minutes, I have three rows of 18 photos each. Before bringing these images into PhotoScan, I'll use Adobe Camera Raw to make adjustments. I'll create two versions of each image. One set will have the contrast pushed way up, as far as I can go without clipping my highlights or crushing my shadows. The other set will be the opposite, setting contrast to zero. Also be sure that your white balance is the same across all images. I like using Bridge and Camera Raw because it's very quick and easy to make changes to multiple images at once. Now we'll open PhotoScan. Open the high contrast images and align them. The high contrast images will make it much easier for PhotoScan to identify and align points. Even with just the sparse point cloud generated, we already have a decent looking result. If your scan already looks like what it's supposed to be at this stage, you're gonna have a good time. After further processing and mesh generation at medium quality, we get this result. Even with only half the rock scanned and no masking at all, we have a pretty good recreation. By replacing our high contrast images with the second neutral set we made, we can create a natural looking texture map for the model. Here is the final result. So, moving on. Let's say you want to scan something more complicated than a rock. I'd rather gouge my eyes out with corn holders than mask images by hand, so we'll want to automate the process. There are two ways to do this. Uh. The first is to set up a chroma key background and generate your masks in an external program. I'm using Keylight and After Effects to do this. When you export your black and white masks, be sure to give them the file name underscore mask suffix. For example, image underscore 1234.jpg would have a corresponding mask image called image underscore 1234 underscore mask dot png or dot jpeg or whatever. The second is to use the from background method. This works by comparing your source image to another image where the subject has been removed and only your background is photographed. Photoscan compares the images to determine what is different and generates a mask to ignore what it believes is the background. Because we're shooting on a turntable and the camera is locked down, we can use the same blank background image for many shots. You only need to shoot another background image when you move the position of the camera. Fiddling with the tolerance may be necessary. For the shots of this soldier, I had the tolerance set to 6. Both methods allow you to mask a large set of images quickly. What if you want to scan something very small? Here is a seashell, approximately 2 inches in diameter. To begin, I switch to a smaller turntable and place the shell on a stand with a bit of poster tack to keep it from moving. 
Then I use a diopter on my 50mm lens to allow the camera to focus much closer. I'm shooting at f22 to increase my depth of field. Again, I'm quickly shooting just three rows of images without any masking. In the final result, you can see that we've captured much of the detail in the shell. It is possible to capture even smaller objects. It all depends on your camera gear and the number of images you shoot. Now, let's take everything we've learned and combine it into a single scan. We'll be using the advanced rock for this. First, put it on a stand so we can get upper, mid, and lower angles. I've hot glued the rock onto the stand so it won't move. Next, we'll shoot our source images against the chroma key background. Because our screen isn't big enough for all our shots, we'll also shoot a background image for the high angles. This means our masks will be generated using a combination of green screen keying and the from background method. After processing our image sets, creating the masks, aligning the images, and generating the final mesh and texture, we have it. A 20 million vertice mesh that's ready to cripple your frame rate. And there you have it, the basics of shooting objects on a turntable. A big thank you to Wish Grancer for generating the high quality seashell and advanced rock meshes. You can find him over on the Photoscan forums, which I recommend you visit anyway. There are a lot of helpful members over there with many tips and tricks to share. Our next video will focus on shooting and generating environment scans with Photoscan. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.